All right, everybody say, I got you. All right, well, we're continuing this series called I Got You, and I just want you to get ready. And again, if you have your, uh, your, your phone or your electronic device and you want to take notes, I encourage you to do this. Uh, last week, this was the message I was going to preach, and then God messed it up, and I went in a different direction because I just felt like God was steering us in a new direction. And so what I want you to do is if you go on your phone, you can go into the uh, watch now, and when you click on there, it'll take you to a place to where you can click on notes. And when you take the notes and you fill them out on your phone, it will actually save those notes to your, uh, to your phone. Or you can do this. I encourage people because you take notes so that you can remember them and you can go back. Is why don't you take a screenshot after you've taken notes? Then you'll have all of those in your favorites and, and you can always go back and check that out. And so I encourage you that you would just uh, make that part of living. And, you know, when you come to church that, hey, I take notes and I'm just leaning in to hear from Jesus. How many of you want to hear from the Lord today? Man. Hey, hey, you know what? It is cool to see our church growing, not only in person, but we know it's growing online, and so it's incredible to continue to reach people and to get people to come here and uh, just to be able to experience more of God and say yes to Jesus. Everyone say yes. yes. All right, so uh, a few weeks back we started this series, and it's based on how in the New Testament that it said uh, there's different scriptures that say something and then one another. Jesus started this off. When he was uh, in, the, in one of the Gospels where he said this, he says, the new commandment I give you is to love one another. As I have loved you, love one another. And so he's saying everything we do needs to be based on, it is a command that we learn how to love one another. And then you go throughout the New Testament and you see different things that are attached to one another. And those are things that actually are demonstrations of God's love and the way that we should love other people. And so we're going through that. A few weeks back, we talked about bear with one another. How many of you have some people you just got to bear with? Come on, you got those EGRs, extra grace required. Anyway, but, but bear with one another. And today, we're going to look at something else, and it's called encourage one another. Everybody say encourage. We're talking about encouraging one another and how you can have better relationships because you know what? Relationships are hard, but man, if we follow God's word, it makes all the difference in the world. Now, about uh, almost three years ago, I had the privilege and the honor, but the challenge of officiating my friend's funeral. And his name was Gary Preston. And Gary, when I was about 21, 22, 23, he was a supervisor that I had, and he's actually the same age as my dad. And I remember times that we would talk and just be together and in, a, in a point where I was trying to find myself and figure out my life, who I was and just identity and I'm not sure and goofing off and doing stupid stuff, Gary was one who brought encouragement into my life. One thing Gary did was he highlighted areas that I was good at that I hadn't been told before. He found things in me that he just told me, man, you've got this and, and you can do this. Or, man, you're so good at this. Or when I would mess up and do something, he would just kind of, you know, like, hey, dude, you know, kind of, you need to come back to this. You, you know, that's a mess up. You messed up on that one. But he brought encouragement to me. And the thing is, with the encouragement that he brought to me, I'll never forget it because it made a significant impact in me. Whenever we encourage people, it makes a significant impact in the lives of other people. Whenever we do that, and so you actually, your life improves when you encourage other people, and we're going to talk about that in a few minutes. But we can make a significant impact, and we're told to encur we're encouraged to love one another. I want you to see this here. This scripture, and it starts in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. It says, therefore, encourage one another and build one another up. When it says encourage, it comes from that word, and it means this, encourage, to put in courage in other people, to give them strength, to give them a zeal, to inspire them. That when they meet troubles or when they have steps of faith and things they're supposed to accomplish, that you have given them courage. 
I think about this and how it could apply to the church today. What if the church was known as a place to find encouragement? What if it was known by people who didn't even go to church or like church or care about God? They just knew when I come in the doors, I find encouragement. I don't even know if I agree with what the pastor is saying, but when I go there, I find encouragement. I step in the door, and when I come in, I find encouragement. There's encouragement all over this place that when I go, and it doesn't matter how far I am or what I've done, is that when I go in, I am encouraged. What a place that we can have and the refuge that this can be when we have encouragement. It says this differently. In the Phillips version, the same scripture, it says, so go on cheering. Everyone say cheering. So go on cheering and strengthening each other. We're to be cheerleaders. We're to be cheerleaders and be excited and motivate people and celebrate people. That's what it looks like. And so today we have a handful of people that got pom-poms. If you got pom-poms, would you just kind of raise those up? Raise those up a little bit. Okay, you're going to help me out today uh, in my message, all right? And, and we're going to celebrate something. But, um, Mikey, can you bring me a pom-pom for a minute? Would you stand if you got a pom-pom? Because I want people to, uh, to see this. And, uh, you know, come on up here, uh, Mikey. Let's stay here with me for a minute. But, but here, can we practice kind of doing this with our pom-poms? That is awesome. Can we just say, yeah? yeah. All right, you <laughs> That's what girls do. Anyway, hey, so hey, what I want you to do so we can really see it on camera is can you just come forward a little bit and maybe get kind of close down here and, and just get out of your seat for a minute? We want them to see it. You can lean in, whatever. Okay, come on, come on, come on, come on. And, and this is what I want you to do. Come, come here, Mikey. Come here. And, and what we're, this is like altar call. Lord, bless them. Bring them to Jesus today. Okay, okay. man, this is awesome. And so I'm going to need your help because when I'm encouraging Mikey... I want you to celebrate and encourage him along with me. So when I go like this, you do this and you encourage him. Mikey, God loves you. Come on. Mikey, God has plans for your life. Mikey, I know you love people. This week, Mikey was in the church today cleaning up a nasty mess and he did it as a servant. Come on. And he doesn't want any glory. He's just here to serve. Come on. And, and, and Mikey, I want you to know this. The Lord told me this. There have been times where you felt like and you've wondered if God sees you and you just see other people and you see things around you and you wonder if God sees you. I want you to know today, God told me, he sees you. He knows you. He's got a plan. And I want you to know we're going to give God praise all the way through. I want you to be built up today in your faith. Amen? Come on. Let's give the Lord a hand. Amen. Would you guys go ahead and be seated? Thank you so much for helping me. You, do you feel better right now? <laughs> that's what encouragement does. Come on. That's, come on. Come on. Come on. Okay. No, no, no. No dancing in church for all your old school people. Anyway, check this out. We live in a world that doesn't know how to encourage we live in a world that's not encouraging. You see things in your personal life or in, the, in, your, in your world or in your community or in your job. We don't know how to encourage each other. And I think this, we don't even know how to receive encouragement because encouragement is an alien to us. What a shift that the church, the people of God could make if we learned how to say, I'm going to give encouragement to people. I'm going to put encouragement in their life. I'm going to put encouragement into their life through the life of Jesus and what God has done. What if we brought encouragement? What if we were an encourager? That was our reputation. Man, how we could make a shift in our world. And we're going to look at a quick little story here about two guys named Jonathan and David. Jonathan was an encourager. Let me give you the backdrop. David, as many of you know, he's the one who killed Goliath and he was promised and anointed to be king. The problem was King Saul, who was Jonathan's dad, was intimidated and insecure about David and what he did and that he was going to be king, that he wanted to kill him. It was a plot that was out there and he sent out the armies to, to where they could go out and they would go ahead and take David's life so that the king wouldn't be threatened anymore. 
until Jonathan, an encourager, showed up and changed everything for David. And he became that encourager, that reinforcement that you and I would love to have in our lives. And I want us to see exactly what Jonathan did so we can learn something from Jonathan and be able to be encouragers for, for other people. It says this, 1 Samuel 23, it says, Jonathan went to find David because David was hiding out because David was discouraged and encouraged him to stay strong in his faith in God. Don't be afraid, Jonathan reassured him. My father will never find you. You are going to be the king of Israel, and I will be next to you, as my father saw is well aware. So the two of them renewed their solemn pact before the Lord. That is Jonathan showing up as an encourager, being there to reinforce him. And what an incredible thing that Jonathan takes the stand as an encourager, and David accomplishes so much because he saw himself in a place of, I'm going to give courage to other people and not try to gather it, and why not me? That's the world we live in. And there's a few things that I want you to get today in your notes and, and that you would follow along. Is simply this. Number one is encouragers live gratifying lives. Encouragers... Are you going to be an encourager or not? Encouragers live gratifying lives. I don't know if you've ever seen this before. I've been able to do this in life. Is that when I have gone to actually kind of encourage someone or point something out or, you, you know, just get behind them and, and, and just been there to say some, uh, maybe some compliments or whatever it is, there is something that is incredible when they actually live it out and they respond to it and they see victory in their life. So many times we think, well, it's gratifying when someone encourages me, but I'm telling you, it is gratifying when you encourage someone else and they leap over mountains because you had a place in their life. It is gratifying. And knowing that we can have that and you can, and, and that's where Jonathan was throughout this. You see how he is committed and he is going to have gratification of what David is going to accomplish. He was David's lifeline. And we need, here's something that we need to put in play when we're talking about encouragement. And it's found in the book of Galatians. We all know this scripture, but I want to apply it here. It says, do not be deceived. Do not be cynical like, yeah, right, I don't know if that's real. You're starting to be deceived. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. He's not going to be ridiculed. Oh, yeah, I thought you had God. I, you know, I thought God was going to. He's, he's not going to do that. He's not going to put up with that, and I'll tell you why. For whatever one sows, that he will also reap. That when you're sowing encouragement in the lives of people, and the things that we're going to talk about in a few minutes, when you're sowing that encouragement, encouragement is going to come back to you. And it may th be through the victory of that other person, or it may, be a, it may be a victory, it may be encouragement that comes directly to you from other people. And we step out in faith to obey and honor the Lord where he says, encourage one another. Inspire. You know people in your life. You know people back when you were younger, or maybe not too long ago, they spoke life into you. They pointed out, you remember them. That's exciting to be remembered for encouraging somebody else. You know who they are. You can be that person. And Jonathan was that person, and he was a lifeline for David. And probably the, the most important thing that I'm going to say today, when it comes to encouragement, is what I'm about to say. And I, you, need, you need to make sure that you listen to this, that you, you write it down, and that you'll, able to hold, you'll be able to hold on to it to say, that's going to be my motivation right there. That is going to be the one thing that I am going to die on a hill on, and that's going to be the reason why I encourage people, why I give courage to others. And it's simply this. Encouragers add value to others, and they are valued by others. Encouragers, they add value to others. That I want your life to be better. It can be better. I'm proud of you. I'm excited. I see good things in you. That we celebrate wins. And when you add value to the lives of others, you are valued by others. Gary was a man in my life who added value to me. To, who encouraged me. Who built me up. Just like the scripture said. 
And he, he added value, and you know what? He made a va- valuable impression, a significant impact in my life to where it was treasure. And when you are an encourager to other people, you are a treasure. You are something that they cannot lose. And so Jonathan added value to David, and he said some pretty strong things that I think we can take from him And to be able to say, I'm going to add value to the lives of other people. And you're going to find that you're going to be valued by others because of the person that you are when you encourage one another. First thing is this. If you're taking notes, and we're seeing this, uh, we're we're just seeing this here in the picture of Jonathan and what's happening, what he's saying, and how he's demonstrating uh, this encouragement, is when we're doing this and we're bringing encouragement and adding value to the lives of other people, Remind them of the endless, unlimited possibilities. Remind them of the unlimited and endless possibilities. Well, how are you saying, Pastor Dave, that there's endless and unlimited possibilities? Because he's helping him get his strength in God. He's saying, look, I want you to hold on to God because right now he is going to be the source for everything you need. And you are going to have people in your life that they're not sure about the direction and where they're going to go. They're not sure if uh, they can can overcome the things that are in their life and, and maybe achieve the dreams that God has given. That's when we go and we strengthen them and say, you've got all of heaven backing you. You've got all of God backing you to where the possibilities are endless. And I want you to hear this. This is impossible for man, but it is possible with God. God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or imagine. We remind them of that. That's what Jonathan was doing. He was reminding him, look, we're going to get back to Jesus right now. And that's what we do, and you can have that today. I'm reminding some of you here today of who you have behind you and who you have for you. We remind people of the endless and unlimited possibilities. The next thing is this. We empower them to overlook defeat. We empower them to overlook. Everyone say overlook. Overlook. Here's Jonathan. He says this. David, don't be afraid. Now, I think David was probably sitting there like, no, you don't understand, dude. There's like thousands of chariots, (laughs) swords. They are after me, and you're saying, don't be afraid. And I love the next line that it said what what Jonathan did. It says, he reassured him. No, no, no. Don't you be afraid. You may have had defeats in the past, David. You may feel like everything is going to fall apart. You may feel like things are over and it's crushing, and you don't know how long you're going to live. Or how you're going to make it through. And we find ourselves at times like that. That man, I have got myself in a mess. Or this, some of you know this, that you have been in a cycle all your life and you don't know how to get out. Or it's like, well my mom always did this and I did this. Or my dad did this. Or I experienced this. And you just don't know how to get past that anymore. Many times... The problem isn't the problem. The problem is what's going on inside of us, and we don't know how to correct it. And so we get defeated. And here is Jonathan saying, don't be afraid of this, David. You got this. And that's what we're putting in the hearts of people is, knowing this, that I know this is hard, but these are corrections that have maybe been their, their generational curses or something that I've developed in my own life. But you know what? God is able to do. And no weapon formed against you will prosper. You need to be encouraged, and you encourage other people when they're in that place. David hadn't lost, but he was defeated. And here's Jonathan there to lift up his head. And you can add value to the lives of other people and be valued by other people. And I believe David valued Jonathan so much that he could go on and live to fight another day. And if we're going to continue to add value and we see with 
with uh, Jonathan here. This is something that we add to it and, and we make sure that we, this is some, a thrust for us, is that we declare belief in others and who they are and what they can be. We declare belief in who they are and what they can be. We all have telling us whether it's in our mind and we're talking to us, our self-talk telling us that we can't do something and I don't believe in myself. We may hear it from outside and, and those who have said things that have really scarred us. But this is what Jonathan said and I think it was like the strongest statement that Jonathan makes right here. He said, David, you're going to be king. And I just kind of get this picture of David hanging his head not knowing, just exhausted, feeling wounded, lost hope, lost belief. And his encourager said, you will be king. And I just see David's head just coming up. It's not over. We declare belief and speak belief into the lives of people. That I believe in you. We compliment people. This is what we crave. And remember, whatever a man sows, he's going to reap. is going to come back in some way, shape, or form. But I believe in you. Man, you got the goods. We point out the potential in people. We look for the good in people. We tell them they can do it. We help them get stronger. And we believe in people and we declare it. And whenever you've had someone declare good things and say, I believe in you, man. I know you got this. I know you can handle this. There's something inside of us that just gets stronger. And though David wasn't the king, Jonathan saw the king in David. And it's time for us to see the king and other people and the things that they are. And you know what? To be able to encourage them when they've messed up. To help them through. And that's where we can bring the belief and help people. And it just encourages them. And we add value into how they think about themselves and who they are. And like, man, maybe, maybe I can do this. Maybe I can become this. And we not only see who they are right now in God's eyes, but who they can be and what God wants to do for them. That's what Jonathan was doing. And we can continue to add value in the lives of other, other people when we stand with them through thick and thin. When we stand with people through thick and thin, we see Jonathan right now. Everything is a mess. And he says this, I will be next to you. You're going through a mess. Don't be afraid. You're going to be king, and I'm still going to be around. I'm not going to be around when times are good only. I'm going to be around all the way through it. And don't we all desire someone to stand with us? Don't you desire to have someone when things are just crappy, and when your life is just a mess, and you're sick of it, and you feel like you screwed it up, and, and you've, all, you've done all these things, and someone says, I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to encourage you. You're going to get through this. This didn't come to stay, it came to pass. And we're not going to stay here. And you are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works. And it doesn't matter how tough things are right now, I'm going to stand with you. Isn't it good when we have someone who stands with us and we have a lot of mess and we make problems for ourselves? Don't you want someone like that? Let's be someone like that, that we are not just talking it, but we are there next to them and I'm not going anywhere. That is the kind of encouragement that so many of us want. And when things are tough and diff there's difficulties and trials coming into our lives, we want someone to encourage us. And I, I'll tell you one thing I say to a lot of people is that when, you, you know, everybody, you know, I'm just here to care for people, love people, and help people through messes and challenges and it could be sickness, it could just be some, re you know, relationships and, and some hardships. And I don't try to cheapen it and say, oh, God's going to get you through. I tell them this. Hey, I'm for you and I'm with you through this thing. It's better than just slapping a scripture at him. Sometimes we just need to know someone's going to be with me when everybody else has ran away. He stayed. She stayed. 
You want to talk about encouragement and making an impact in the life of other people and you add value, that is how we do it. Man, I'm next to you. I'm not going anywhere. And then you see Jonathan and David. It says they make a pact. They make an agreement. We are together. We are in this. We are going through this. And with Jonathan, he knew his role to be an encourager, and that was his desire, and that's what he wanted to be for David. He wanted to see good things happen for David. And that's why we never stop encouraging people. We never stop encouraging people. May that be your reputation, that people want to be around you because they feel better about themselves when they leave. I've got a friend of mine, he's a, he's a pastor, but just because you're a pastor doesn't mean you got it all together and you got all these gifts and traits down. But one thing I notice about this pastor is whenever I'm around him, he seems to just say something nice about me or to me or whatever. And I'm just like, hey man, that's pretty cool, you know, thanks. And, 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 but something I notice also is that he's saying it to other people because he's an encourager and he knows that this is how I help people. I give them courage and I help them face life and I help them to see the dreams happen and I help, I help them overcome and take steps of faith and see their worth, see their self-esteem that they have in God. He encourages people. And I tell you what, I love being around that pastor. And people will love being around you. You got some jacked up relationships? Just start encouraging them all. Hey, I know you talked about me behind my back and sent out some rumors. Encourage them how good they were when they text out those rumors. No, I'm kidding. No. And you lie really good. I just want you to know, I think it's your spiritual gift. No. No, that we can find something positive. Doesn't that change your mindset? Change your mindset to where you're a positive person. You start looking for ways to encourage people. That's what we do. And my friend has made it part of his life to encourage other people. And there's a scripture that gives urgency to this. It's not just something casual or if we can. This scripture gives um, urgency to it, and it's Hebrews chapter 3. It says, encourage. Everybody say encourage. Encourage each other every day. Not some days. Not once a week. Not if I can. It says encourage each other every day while you have the opportunity. That we look for opportunities to be able to encourage other people every day. It's a manhunt. It's a manhunt for us that that is what we are set out to do. And it is something that scripture tells us. Don't miss your opportunity to encourage people to add value to their lives, for them to be built up to accomplish their dreams, and you get to be part of, the, part of the gasoline that was in their engine that helped them to get there. Because whatever a man sows, he's going to reap. Don't worry, it's going to come back to you, but do it for their benefit and not for yours alone. And the only place and the only way that we can give encouragement to other people is that we recognize I've got encouragement from the Lord. My courage, my self-esteem, my confidence, it all comes from the Lord. And because he has done this, I now give this away to somebody else. Over the years, I've um, officiated a lot of funerals. I've officiated funerals to where someone was murdered shot several times I've officiated when um, elderly have passed away I've officiated when someone may have had a heart attack or something just just came up or some have just been ill for a long time I've, I've officiated a lot of funerals and those are never easy things to walk into it's not my favorite thing to do because it is a hard thing to be able to be there but I'm here to encourage one another I'm here to encourage people. And it is my mission, it is my ministry. When I go into times of funerals and people are mourning and, and that's a healthy thing to mourn and it's okay, we're not gonna cover that over. 
is I'm there to bring encouragement to them. And almost every time that I officiate a funeral, I share something that Jesus said. And I want you to receive it because as you receive it, you're able to give it. He says this to his disciples. In my father's house are many mansions. In my father's house are many mansions. And I go to pre prepare a place for you. In my father's house, I want you to know I'm going right now. And I've got all of the cinder blocks. I've got the nails. I've got the two by fours. I've got the stucco. I've got the paint. And I'm preparing a place for you. And what he's saying is this. You can do it. I've given you salvation. Live in that salvation. I've given you eternity. I like you. I want to be with you. I've given you strength that you can overcome sin and, and destruction and discouragement in life. I believe in you. You're going to make it through. That's why I go to prepare a place for you. That's encouragement that we have from Jesus. My father, in his house, there are many mansions and I'm going right now and I'm getting to work for you that's the work of Jesus that he give up his life here in here in, on earth and he continue to love us on into eternity that's where our encouragement comes from because he added value to me I value the blood of Jesus that washes away all my sin that comes and purifies me from all unrighteousness that makes me right I value Jesus with all of my heart and I'm going to live for Jesus for the rest of my life you want to know why he's added value to me and I know I'm something in Jesus Christ would you bow your heads this morning? I want you to be encouraged today. Some of you may have come in and you have heavy hearts. Some of you may have come in and, and you're just going through it. Maybe you feel numb with God. Maybe you're, maybe you're angry at somebody. Maybe there, there's something that you know God wants you to do and you just feel like, I don't have the faith to do it. I don't even know if I can. Know if I can. Listen, with, with man it's impossible, but with God all things are possible. And today I want to pray with you. You just say, I need encouragement today. Let me pray with you for the encouragement of God to come in and to flood your heart today would you raise your hand and I can pray with you pray for you today yeah oh there's several hands come on just throw them up Lord we reach out to heaven today for encouragement that comes from you Lord that we're going to be built up Lord we don't look at the things around us or the sinking sand on Christ the solid rock I stand Lord we stand in your encouragement we stand in your acceptance we stand in your grace that we're not good enough to get there, but you make it happen anyway. The God, Lord, that you have this mercy, that, Lord, we should receive worse than what we have, but you keep us from us from, a, from it anyway, God. You help us through. You love us. You don't condemn us. You don't turn on us. Lord, you're preparing a place for us in heaven. And I pray, my friends, Lord, today would be built up in you and how you love them. And Lord, you got them. You're here to love them and encourage them. We, we receive the encouragement of the Holy Spirit right now. Would you just allow the Holy Spirit to come in and encourage you in your heart today? Whatever discouragement you have that's there, it's taking away courage. We're here to give courage today. Your heads bowed for a minute. And Jesus is prepared to build a mansion and build a place for you in heaven for eternity. 
the thing is you have to make Jesus Christ your personal Lord and Savior. Making a decision to live for him every day. To begin to trust God with your life just day by day. It doesn't just automatically happen. I wish I was some kind of super Christian. All of a sudden, it's just trusting God day by day. But today, if you haven't made Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior, I'm going to give you an opportunity to say, Lord, you're going to be the leader of my life. Maybe you've fallen away from God. You've walked away from him. You used to maybe when you are little or maybe it was recent or whatever. And you're just kind of away from God and you know you are not in a good place with God today. Today I want you to renew your commitment that you have with Jesus to make him your Lord and Savior. With no one looking around. Now raise your hand if that's you. Just put your hand up. Amen. Yes. Thank you, brother. Someone else. Yes. Thank you, guys. All the way in the back. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, and those of you who are online, you can go ahead and raise your hand or say yes to Jesus, whatever it is. But we're going to pray a prayer of salvation today and believe that God is going to give us new life because we begin to trust him. Would you stand with me this morning, everybody here? And I want you to pray this prayer with me. Not out loud, just in your heart, a personal prayer, this intimate prayer between you and the Lord. Just say, dear Jesus, today I'm going to begin to trust you with my life. Lord, I know it's going to be a journey and not a sprint. So each day, Lord, I give my intentions, I give my actions, and I give my thoughts to you. I know Jesus died on the cross for me shed his blood to wipe away all my sin and today I leave a life of sin I believe Jesus was risen from the dead to give me new life purpose and eternity Jesus I ask you to be my savior today Lord I make you the leader of my life Lord thank you for new life now you have mine. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Can we just celebrate with those who have come back to Jesus and those who first time just say, I want to make him Lord and Savior. We're all about saying yes to Jesus. Everybody say yes. We say yes to Jesus. Now here's the thing. One person every day encourage somebody. One person. If you can do that. Every day. You can even cheat and get it done on your way out this morning before you leave. All right? See, I like how you talked about me behind my back. That was great. You're just doing really well. No, I'm kidding. But let's encourage one another. Let me go ahead and send you out with a blessing today on your way out. You can give an offering. The ushers will be in the back, and you can do that. I want to thank you so much for making Streamline Church possible. It's only because of your generosity and your faithfulness. All right, let me pray. Father, I just pray for the offering right now. And Lord, those who are giving, Lord, out of you speaking to them, and Lord, whether it's conviction or motivating God or you're encouraging them by their spirit. Lord, we just pray for more than enough for our church to continue to further your vision, Lord, for streamline and what you want to do through the body of Christ. So Lord, we give to you today, not to a church, not to a thing, but to you and for your mission. In Jesus' name, amen. Church, you are God's treasure possession. Your heavenly Father is proud of you. He watches over you, and he will take care of you. You have the Holy Spirit living inside of you, and he will help you. Because of Jesus Christ, you can be anything, and you can do anything. You are the hands and feet of Jesus in a lost and dying world. You are a difference maker. Nothing can take away God's greatness in your life. You are blessed amen god bless you guys go and encourage somebody we're growing and it's coming in continue to reach people